Okay, good morning. Um, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers of the conference for giving the opportunity of sharing the research. I want to thank all the team members of this work, Sauro Geliki of Kafka University of Venice and the head of the project, Paolo Mozzi, a geologist of University of Padua, Sandra Primon, a geologist who has, has a long working experience in the Venetian area. We started from a, a multidisciplinary approach with a synergy cooperation of the team, adopting a wider use of public data, such as geological databases of Venetian administration, public archives, and so on. So the sample area has been studied mainly through geological data, archaeological survey, historical cartography, and area photo interpretation. We gather as in a group and we learn to play as a team, learning each other's vocabulary and understanding limits and potentialities of different skills. We draw our attention on an area characterized by um, highly enterprise and submerged zones. The district of Mira surrounding the ancient site of San Silvio Monastery. And fluvial deposits and urban and industrial settlements hide most of the ground surface and traces of the past landscape are almost invisible for the traditional instruments. Today, the landscape is an intensively cultivated countryside which overlooks directly the edge of the lagoon. This exceptional landscape outcomes from the great rated and intrusive human activities starting in the 12th century when a branch of the huge river Brenta was deflected. This mon monastic site, located in the southwest island of Venice, was one of the most important ducal religious communities. Founded in the town of the rising valley settlement, it hosted many ducal barriers during early, the early Middle Ages. After a brief summary of early medieval relations between the monastery of Saint Hilario and its landscape, I will focus on the late Middle Ages and the early modern age. The time range is crucial. I consider the centuries after the arrival of the huge Brenta River in the 12th century and the construction of the famous Palladian estate, the so-called Villa Fosca di Alla Malcontenta, 16th century. It was a period of crisis and um, transformations. So the monks of Sant'Ilario left the monastery, local noble families managed the landscape and deeply modified it. The environment continuously changed. In other words, I am tempted to frame that area in its most troubled moment, <laughs> just before the reorganization of properties and rural connection by Foscari family. In the 9th century, uh, the religious community moved to St. Hilario from some several islands. It, it built the monastery in a strategic area next to a ducal chapel. It was a key zone in the crossroad of water courses toward the lagoon and the important Anya route, uh, probably partially still in use during the early Middle Ages. A feature of rivers in that area suggests um, that they were there were passages between overland routes and navigable itineraries toward the lagoon instead of landing places along huge waterways. And the arrival of the huge Brent River in the 12th century um, triggered a chain reaction of environmental changes and human intervention which results in a completely different landscape. The diversion of Brenta triggered a permanent situation of hydrologic instability which changed the appearance and the function of this area. Immediately, the diversion uh, produced a double, a double effect, uh, floods and damages to the monastic land and, on the other hand, a significant uh, economic advantage. Um, the importance of the new strategic position in a new river network were probably immediately perceived by St. Hilario. The monks supervised the water routes toward the lagoon, controlling religious institutions on the edge of salty waters. However, in a long-term perspective, the diversion of Brenta triggered a permanent situation of hydrologic instability. Um, first of all, a sand transported by Brenta progressively obstructed uh, river beds, and between them, many villages and forests were replaced by swampland. And in the early 13th century, Part of the monastic community started to live in San Gregorio of Venice, probably attracted by new opportunities of a real medieval metropolis. And the second quarter of the 13th century has been a crucial period for the decline of Sant'Ilario, both for monastic buildings and for landscape. 
The major outflow of the river Brenta was moved just in front of Venice and the city started to be endangered due to the spread of swampland and flagel deposits. At the same time, the flow rate of the Brenta branch near the monastery dramatically decreased and it was gradually buried. So, um, the monastic community permanently moved to San Gregorio in Venice and the surroundings of San Gilario were rented to local aristocratic families. In particular, the Valier family obtained a huge area in the south with the right of reclaiming, of excavating canals, of building uh, water mills, and above all, of cleaning and reactivating the so called dead canals. In other words, it was no more a strategic countryside well connected to Venice and in the heart of the monastic interest, but a deteriorated environment left to the managing of local tenants. In the beginning of the 14th century, the ancient course of River Brenta in front of the monasteries was completely filled and its banks were used as a road. The mouth of Brenta was a serious threat for Venice because the swamplands were gradually breaching the eastern zone of the city and fluvial deposits were progressively obstructing Laguna channels. So, to protect in Venice, the mouth of Brenta River has diverted a lot of times. Um, an area that um, characterized for centuries by a wall of connection between mainland and salted waters was definitely um, separated from the lagoon. So the branch of Brenta conserved its function on significant water route and became the main axis along whom new settlements were distributed. Finally, the construction of the Foscari Villa changed the landscape. However, during the first half of the 15th century, a general rearrangement of the area was already started. As we can see in the picture here, um, the course of Brenta River matches with its actual position, leading to the appearance of new towns such as Mira. Moreover, in this period, the principal waterways that led to Santillario Monastery were buried and reduced to roadways. Therefore, land exploitation was completely changed and new planning solutions were needed. For example, in the 15th century, the so-called Fossa dei Malcontenti, an artificial canal with which allowed the outflow of Brenta River was realized, and inhabitants harshly objected against this hydraulic work. And for this reason, this reason and the name of the canal Fossa dei Malcontenti were interpreted as something like river of dissatisfaction. In the second half of the 15th century, that area was troubled by numerous and cruel borderland issues of the Valier family. Strong and continuous floods of Brenta and the excavation of new drainages was making property boundaries almost un unrecognizable. Um, from the beginning of the, 15th the 16th century, the Venetian aristocratic family of Foscari started a land aquarium policy in the countryside. So Foscari family completely changed the root network of the area. The land acquisition by Foscari family was not easy and is in Nether Palace. Um, the realization of a great land tenure by a Venetian aristocratic group inevitably collided with the interest of many minor noble families. So the, the expansion uh, of the Foscari property continued for a lot of time. And however, the soil quality of this land could not be compared to the fields along the Brent River, which were providing better, the better profits. And to improve the return of their tenures, the Foscari family reclaimed the southern area, excavating a new network of drainages, which significantly uh, transformed a martial landscape in an agricultural countryside. In other words, they were building the preconditions for the Palladian landscape. Um, the new economic importance of the area and the beauty of its landscape played a decisive role in the setting of the villa. It was a strategic uh, um, trading and passing point, but also an amazing place. And in the, in the 16th century, Andrea Palladio chose, in fact, it as the site for the villa. This little prominence in the Foscari's property, where Brenta River makes a suggestive meander until today. So the Riviera del Brenta is indeed an amazing tourist attraction. 
In conclusion, I can make a number of additional remarks on this work. It is important at this point to document both how, how over time perceptions and are transformed by landscape changes and how local communities are connected to water management following up on the idea of an emerging memory scape. How are people connected with historical uh, events? How, how many memories um, they have? How they are related with environment now completely changed and what they cherish as intangible heritage? It is necessary to use digital technologies to develop an innovative application that enable communities, individuals and professionals to engage with culture uh, of the past. From heritage sites to family memories, giving new ways to understand, interpret and share information and model the past. In the early Middle Ages, a monastery was founded in that area because of the feature of landscape and the exploitation possibilities. The arrival of Brenta River in the 12th century has turned this quickly around, reducing it to a desolate large swamp. So from this perspective, um, Mira was only a, um, an marginal and problematic countryside that gained the attention of Venice only when it is necessary to realize hydrological works on the River Brenta. Venice's efforts to protect the city and the productive areas outside of the boundaries uh, um, from frugal deposits led to the complete removal of uh, river outlets. So in this way, the minimal importance of the, this area for Venetian became uh, clear. Meanwhile, the inhabitants continued to reclaim, to modify land and river to maximize its exploitation. So the effort they, they have made led them to achieve another uh, unexpected result, to create the condition for development of the upcoming Palladian setting. The Brenter River has played a double role in this landscape game created by itself, first as a destroyer of a territory and later as a catalyst for a new economic development. That is why human intervention in landscape are always related with function and the exploitation of areas. The value that human beings assign to a specific territory in a specific time is the key to understand these interventions. So this is true talking about the past, but also about the present. So the chronological distance make it just more clear. Um, today, whole landscape around Venice are being reshaped and that changes the way cultural memory is encoded and interpreted. In particular, the present district of Mira is characterized by a road network, today perfectly integrated with small rivers, canals and the famous Brenta River. Within this flooded context, on the contrary, the medieval monastic precinct of St. Hilario reveals how, in order to maintain this strategic position, anthropogenic landscape transformation can be dramatic. Indeed, today, nothing remains of the ancient monastery on the ground. Moreover, the continuous and complete disruption of churches and structures has served to the construction of the present Marghera municipality. How can we communicate with people in order to relate present time with past events that is not only increasing engagement with places and memory assets, but creating a dialogue and a broader range of memories in participatory ways? We cannot understand this transformation without the analysis of the landscape and its exploitation. So, um, moreover, this kind of research is a guideline to understand how actual environmental dynamics modify feature of landscape and life of local communities. The promising researches in digital and cultural heritage, including design thinking, storytelling, maker culture, etc., reveal the most effective tool to communicate, visualize, and generate innovative ideas and make creative use of information, data, and media to express complex information. Finally, I regard a multidisciplinary approach as a, an absolutely the best solution to be adopted. Geolog geologist, archaeologist, geographer, but also digital storyteller, media artist, architects, and engineering for deciphering this kind of landscape and its complexity, understanding the paradigm of memory scape, and to communicate to the present community this story and raise the awareness of the, these places in which they live today. So thank you very much for your kind attention. All your questions and feedbacks are always welcome.